Welcome to a brand new episode. This is 23 LeBron James videos in 23 weeks. And if you have missed any of the episodes that we have done so far, there's a playlist link on the top right of your screen and link down below in the description. And if you click on that link, you will find all of the episodes. This one is on the time that LeBron James trash talked Gilbert Arenas and ended up changing the whole outcome of a playoff series. This story is amazing, hilarious, and insightful. And if you think that you've heard it before, you may have, but you've never heard it quite like this. This video has all the NBA players that were involved on this day who remember it and talk about it, all in the one video. Of course, full credit to all the interviews, podcasts, and clips that are involved in this video. They are on the screen right now and linked down below in the description, so be sure to check them out in their entireties. But if you do enjoy the video, the way it's pieced up together and edited, if you could help me out by hitting that like button, I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you're new around here and you think you may enjoy the rest of the series, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I don't want to keep you guys waiting, so without further ado, welcome to the day LeBron James trash tour, Gilbert Arenas. Back in the day when, when, when Brown was a young guy playing for us, I'll never forget, we're playing Washington, I think the first time we made the playoffs. We begin with the NBA playoffs and LeBron James in the same sentence. Yeah, LeBron had been left out of similar sentences after the first two years of his career, but he put an exclamation point on the sentence that he scripted on Saturday. The Cavaliers at home hosting the Wizards in game one of their best of seven series. LeBron James' playoff debut was a masterpiece. He got it to go! LeBron James hit the big shot. I wore like an 18 or a 19 shoe, I went to make. LeBron was a problem. I'm gonna tell you. Blitz, zone, shows. <laughs> he dissected every cover. LeBron he knew everything. Too. LeBron had the opportunity to practice what he preached and what he saw. And of course, I mean, this man came out of high school built like a mad truck, fast, like I've never seen it before. Young LeBron was like then. violent. Like yeah. this transition, he was just a machine going yeah. downhill every time. If y'all think he's fast now, what, what you think he? <laughs> I tell people that all what the time. What you think <laughs> what was coming down the lane then? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I never seen anything like it. Braun was like, his, his mind just, it worked. Like I never seen it before as a player. I remember like Mike Brown trying to draw plays and Braun, would, he's a coach. He was one of those players. I smart right very smart when you're trying to say he's not a one-on-one -on -one guy he's not this he knows that's not his skill he's not going to try to do it mm -hmm. right he's going to play to his perfection right and that's hard to do i'm just going to stick with what i'm great at and i'm going to perfect it you can't lose focus one second in the playoffs when it's showtime, you let the great player do it and you get out of his way. Cavaliers with 3.6 left. They either win it or have to go to Washington and win a game six. He could see over the coverages. He, he, he killed everything we threw at him. His basketball IQ is, people don't give him enough credit for his basketball IQ. I know the clock is running down. I'm either going to draw a defender where I can get my teammate open look or I can get any shot I want to. Michael Ruffin is on LeBron. We came into the playoffs and like he's, you know, posting up mm -hmm. and he's taller than Antoine. And I had to whisper, hey coach, I think he's, did he grow? <laughs> did this motherfucker grow? And that was like, it was like, I don't think so. And I was like, man, he bigger than them dudes yeah. now, man. <laughs> and then we was like, put Jared on him. So we had to put Jared Jeffries on him, Jared 6'11". Six, six, so we tried, I mean, we tried everything. Use to play it in. Every possession um, for 48 minutes counts. Foul James. You gotta have that toughness, and if you don't have it, you won't get respect. LeBron to the hoop for the win! He oh got my it God. with nine tenths left! Arenas threw it in the air! It's over! The Cavaliers have won it! You can book this one! to the Cavaliers! I don't believe in pressure. I just go out there and play basketball. I've been doing it my whole life. He was arguably, he could have won the MVP every year. That's the type of talent that he was. He killed everything we threw at him. Everything he threw, everything we threw at him, he killed it. 
Mm-hmm. Like it was just one of those, and you can just see it. Like, yeah, if we're gonna get him, we got to get him now because the smarter he gets, the stronger he gets. It, we ain't gonna get past him mm-hmm. in the playoffs, man. Game six, the first round of the 2006 NBA playoffs. You had two free throws, mm-hmm. and LeBron got in your ear. Mm-hmm. What did he say? Uh, okay, so we have to back up a little bit. This, see, this is the real story. I was balling. These balls. Arenas from way downtown. He's got in the 30s again, 31. His range is one of the best in the league. James comes right back for the three. Looking to inbound. Arenas puts up the three. Bang! Oh. Gilman Arenas ties the game. I was balling that fourth quarter, and we, miracle comeback, you know, um, down three. Um, I hit the, uh, hit almost like a 30-footer to, to take us to overtime. Arenas puts up the three. Bang! Oh! Gilman Arenas ties the game. Like, I was, I was balling that game. Just hit the three to get us in overtime. Playing great in overtime. Um, very great battle. Two percent. James, hard drive inside. James, a crossover. Once again, the drive. And the foul. Unstoppable going to the basket. Mike, he's so uncanny with his vision. Smarting here. I think he has something wrong with his leg. Arenas backs it in. Kind of got a little tired and, you know, in overtime, but got to the free throw line. <laughs> now, it was just, you can see the right one's on the wall. Like, yeah. we was better than them, right? He just outsmarted us. Mm-hmm. the ball with the timeout and use fouls arenas you know it's butter game's mm-hmm. over we have one i'm about to hit these three this is easy mm-hmm. you know because we gamble at lebron's house during the series right not lebron but you know um me um damon jones you know that was our group right so damon jones was horrible horrible he was hor- horrible you're at LeBron's house. Mm-hmm. Penthouse, condo, he had all the fucking floors, right? So we're going there watching game tape, just vibing, right? Right. So Damon Jones is horrible. So I always used to say, I like, every time we played them, I always used to scream out, <laughs> the landlord is here. <laughs> the landlord needs his rent money. The landlord is here. I want my rent money, <laughs> right? <laughs> that used to be about the, I don't give a fuck if it's $4. Uh, the landlord is here. Right. So that's, I'll go, like, every time we came to town, shoot around, I'm yelling it. The game, I'm yelling it. Like, that's all I yell. Right? So I used to just yell that shit during the games, mm-hmm. right? At Damon Jones. Like, I wouldn't even accept his payment just so I can keep yelling that shit. So I told the coach, hey, anytime you put Damon Jones in, I'm going one four flat. One four flat. I'm gonna fucking destroy him. He owes me money. Until he pays me my money, <laughs> one four flat. He's gonna be a liability out on his court. And that's what I did every time he came in. One four flat. Huh? Now I said I'm the landlord. That tenant owes me money. You think about putting that tenant <laughs> in the fucking game? I'm destroying him. So when Damon Jones get in, fucking the whole playbook goes out of the window. Fucking destroy. So they stopped fucking playing Damon Jones. He stopped playing. So he doesn't even play in game six. <laughs> if you know the background to this story, I didn't play it, mm-hmm. and this was a double overtime game, and I had sat on the bench the whole time. Mm-hmm. And I'm just fucking laughing at him, like, yeah, fucker, I got you. I, I, you know, it's like, and so I'm just taunting Damon Jones the whole fucking time. Up one, I got the two free throws. And Arenas misses the free throw with 15.1 remaining. And, I'm, and I, I can even see it on my face when I watch, like, oh, yeah, you're missing these, bro. Mm-hmm. And then I'm, I missed the first one, and I'm sitting there like, how the hell did I miss that? That's just so off. Mm-hmm. Missed the second one. And I'm sitting here like. And, he, and that's when LeBron tackles you. You miss this, you know, who's going to end the game. And Cleveland still with a timeout remaining. I have to be smart here now. Yo, did this just really happen? Where did I go? I don't miss free throws. I don't miss clutch free throws. And uh, Richard's clinging to a one-point lead. That's interesting. Who knows what the LeBron game could say? If you miss this, you know who's going to make it. Yeah. See, so if you miss this, you know who will end the game. Yep. You're still going to be hit ahead by one if he makes it by two. And 
for that one second I became human and thought about it. If I miss these, these are I mean, how what, what? You know, and it, and it had me thinking about it. So I missed both of them. And when he tapped me and he's like, you know, if you miss these, you know, that's game. I said those exact words. I said, you missed both of these free throws. Y'all going home. Renis misses them both and Cleveland takes time. So when he when he whispers, you know who's gonna hit it. Everybody assumed it was him. He's talking about Damon Jones. Like, if you miss this, Damon Jones is getting subbed in. I knew what he was talking about. And I think the thought went into my head of, uh, they really gonna put Damon Jones in. Right, so we're sitting there, and then I see the fucker taking his shirt off. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. They're not, who, they're not putting Damon Jones, who the fuck put Damon Jones in? Right, <laughs> so, Damon, so Damon Jones is sitting there happy, like, hell yeah, boy. Like, he's talking shit like, like he's about to get the ball. And when Mike Brown called my name, I was standing in, in the back of the huddle, and it surprised me that he called me. And then I see Damon Jones in there stretching. How about this, Damon Jones coming into the game for the first time here this evening. And they really put the man in, and the fact that LeBron even passed him the ball is what hurt the most. He shoots 82% there in a year. He's over 81% here in the playoffs. He'll shoot. And right back in the hands of LeBron James. LeBron started off with the ball. They double teamed him. He just double, triple teamed him. Here's your trap. LeBron James not play, passing the ball to a dude who ain't played two games, ain't played this game, ain't got a shot up. No way. So, you know, we're leaning towards like, like, LeBron, because he's already hit two game winners this series. But that nervousness uh, turns into fire and drive. And sure enough. And as the ball was coming to me, I blanked out. So I really don't know what happened. Fucking passed the ball to Damon Jones. Damon Jones hit a fucking <laughs> jumper. Damon Jones puts it in with 4.8 remaining. Damon Jones in the corner just came in the game for the first time in two games. and. Damon Jones puts it in, and the Cleveland Cavaliers advance to the second round. This is LeBron's show, you know, we're just all, you know, we're all witnesses. Damon Jones hit the, from the left baseline, hits mm -hmm. a bucket wide open. Damon Jones, who hadn't played a second all game, inserted and knocks down the winning shot. An incredible finish. And for the first time since 1993, the Cavaliers go to the second round. <laughs> Like you, like you were really that petty where you would actually give that man the ball. Who, who, who does that? <laughs> that, that, that? That's what, that's why I said, I, I had to, that's why I said, I went to go like do mental stuff. So I sat in the gym, took two, 3,000 free throws. Mm -hmm. And then I even took it a step further and went with a guy named Frank in San Francisco who trains- Chameleon. Um, huh? Chameleon BX. Yeah. And uh, he trains um, military, black ops, special, you know, all mental stuff. And I went to him just extra. Just make sure my mental is focused. Because I, I was like, ah, this didn't just happen. You didn't tell me this man was going to come in and hit. And then he comes in and then you pass him the ball. Like he's done hit five straight threes. I need to go see some hill because I don't want to be the, the next uh, Nick Anderson out here. That set the tone for who we were and why we were as good as we were the next four or five years because of his unselfishness, his willingness to mm -hmm. make the right play mm -hmm. every single time. So I was never mad at him for making the right play. Right. Because now it makes it easier for me to tell you Got to. and you Got to, to make the right, the right play. Doing this one yeah. doing it all the time. Yeah. After that, he, he just, just this one man just owned me. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, here are two new videos I think that you will also enjoy. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you are new. And I will catch you guys in the next one.